I'm Nicolina Moon, and this is my first tournament report for On the Bubble. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Jersey Marathon, which happened last weekend. Um, before the marathon, cities had been going only okay for me. I had uh, a second and a top four and a top eight, I think. Uh, so I was really trying to get some more points going into the marathon. Um, I had been playing Blastoise for most of the city season, but I didn't feel that great about its chances going into the marathon just because there were a lot of uh, Genesect decks, and every time I encountered one, I felt myself getting kind of uh, on the losing end of that matchup. So um, I decided to play Plasma Lugia, Snorlax, or Snorbax, or Yeti, if you want to use that name. Um, and I used my friend Kevin Baxter's list, so that credit goes all to him. I changed maybe like one or two cards from it, um, and kind of just went into the tournament with it, hoping for the best. I didn't have a lot of time to test because I had just gotten out of finals. Um, I'm in grad school, so there wasn't a lot of free time there. Um, but I had played Plasma uh, last spring quite a bit, so I figured it would be pretty similar. Um, so I wasn't that worried about the play style of the deck. Okay, let's, uh, I'll recount what I remember about my matchups. I don't remember everyone's name. Um, it was kind of a blur. It was four days. Uh, we stayed in a hotel. They were long days. We were tired. But I'll, I'll let you know what I remember. Um, so I'm going to refer to my notes for that. So day one with Snorbax. Um, round one, I played against Jordan, playing Darkrai Garbodor. Um, from what I remember of this game, it wasn't very much of a game. Jordan didn't draw very well. He didn't set up Garbodor. Um, it was kind of not a representative match. So that was a round one win on day one. And okay, round two, James Ballard with Verizian Genesect um, for the Shaman deck and Buffalon, I think. Um, this game, he started Shaman. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about it. Besides, it was he didn't draw super well. Um, I think I drew average, and um, I just did the right and knuckle thing, and I'm pretty sure I took two knockouts with Lugia for the win. Round three, I don't remember the name of my opponent. Um, he was playing Darkrai Absol um, with some hammers. So that was uh, that's always pretty annoying when you're playing Plasma and you see a hammer on the first turn. Everyone knows, you know, like, oh, God, this is going to be pretty annoying. And um, But I, I remember what I usually try to do in that matchup is use right and knuckle until all the save lives have uh, been knocked out and then... Um, go ahead with Snorlax and try to take down a couple Dark Rise. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's what I did, and it it worked out. So I won round three, so I'm 3-0 and at that point. Um, I just need to win one more. With, with the amount of people, 402s are usually guaranteed. So I needed to win one more. So my next round was against Angel Miranda with Dark Eye Garbodor. Again, so much Dark Eye. Um, it was very popular that first day anyway. Um, not for the rest of the marathon, it kind of fell off the radar. But that, that day, obviously, I played against uh, one, two, three Dark Eye decks. So, but my game against Angel um, was pretty average. I don't remember either of us drawing significantly dead or significantly well. Um, but he didn't get Garbodor online in the first couple turns. So I was able to raid and knuckle for more than 30 damage, which is always really good against Dark Guy. Um, obviously, you need to set up two Deoxys to do the thing with Lugia. But I, I, I feel like um, going with Snorlax is a better way to handle the matchup because um, if they can't get their hands on uh, Ball Laser Bank, they can't. Oko with Dark Eye, and it can just roll through like four prizes at the end of the game. So um, I won that round, and then I was feeling 
pretty good because I was a 4-0 and I figured I was safe. Um, so my next round, I ID'd with Dylan Dreyer playing Blastoise. Um, and then my last round, I ID'd with Dylan Bryan. He was playing Dark Red Um So that was awesome. And then we all waited for a top eight. And then my top eight matchup uh, was against Curran Hill with um, Burzian Genesect deck that similar to the one James Ballard was playing round two. Um, the first game in the series, I drew absolutely nothing, as I feel like happens um, at least once a tournament when I play Plasma. <laughs> I'll just be like drawing like Plasma Balls and Pokemon and Frozen Cities and just kind of really terrible stuff. Um, so that game was over very quickly. And then um, game two, I think it might have been like the reverse. He was drawing basically nothing and I was drawing um, playable cards. <laughs> So um so then we were one and one and then game three was very close. I don't we didn't go to time, I don't think. Um, but I ended up closely winning game three. So then I move on to top four. Um at top four, I'm against Jimmy Pendarvis with his um Blastoise deck, focusing heavily on Black Kyram, uh two Caldeo, three Black Kyram, he played Electrode, he played catchers. Um so he gets a quick start, game one, gets a turn two Black Ballista, and he basically just wins that game. I can't remember that many details. Um, I won game two with the help of Frozen City, and I'm pretty sure I did the two knockouts with Lugia thing. And then game three was a crazy game. He uh, went first, obviously, and he got turn two Black Ballista, um, catcher on my Lugia that was on the bench. Um, being Raider Knuckle too. And then I end in the four. He gets another Black Ballista <laughs> on my Thunderous. I end him to two, and I, I think I like promoted new Thunderous or something because I just have to Raider Knuckle again. And off the two cards, he gets a Juniper for the last Superior Rep for the win, so the whole game took like four turns. Um, it was pretty brutal. But that's the way it goes with Blastoise sometimes, I guess. Um, Jimmy. I lost in top two, I think, the Dylan Bryan one with the Dark Eye Gargler, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, all right, so that was day one. Um, I was feeling pretty good about the deck, having basically just picked it up, and it took me to the top four. So I was really happy about that. Um, yeah, so that was great. <laughs> day two. Uh, so I just, I stuck with the exact same list for day two, because I was like, um, why change it? It went really well. Uh, I didn't change a single card. Um, despite the, some hype it was getting on the internet and on Facebook, nobody else was really playing it. Um, someone I know, Matt Rockwell, changed and he played it that day, and he ended up going X and O in Swiss also, and I think we were like the only two people they're playing it. So round one, I don't remember the name of the person I played against. Um, I think it was a Pokedad playing Blastoise. Uh, there was, I remember there was an awkward situation in this game where he had a Black Ballista or something built up on the bench, but he had a Squirtle active, and he had filled up his bench with maybe like two Black Kyrams, like another Squirtle, a Jirachi, and something else, so he had no way to bench a Caldeo, um, so at one point I was forced to promote a Snorlax and attach to the Snorlax um, while he couldn't retreat the Squirtle and Black Ballista me, um, so I'm pretty sure I like spent f like five turns manually attacking to a Snorlax um, with a Squirtle stuck in the active there because um, he didn't play a switch, he couldn't, yeah, couldn't get into his, uh, couldn't bench a Caldeo to knock out my Snorlax and couldn't retreat into his black hair. Um, so it was, he was pretty frustrated, <laughs> understandably so, Snorlax can be very frustrating. And I think eventually I ended up red signaling up the threatening Kyrum and knocking it out with the Snorlax. Um, so that was a round one win. And then round two, I played against another Blastoise. Um, Frozen City is doing a lot of work. 
Yeah, I don't remember much about that game, and I don't remember my opponent's name. Round three, I played against Tool Drop, which I was very nervous about playing because I had never tried the matchup, but theoretically it seems terrible because of the silver mirrors and, uh, you know, Trubbish being able to swing for 180 pretty easily, very fast. Um, but I remember this particular opponent had a semi-rough start. He started uh, manually attaching to a Sigilith, um, the Toolbox one, not the Nami X one. And um, I was able to... He eventually got going, but I was able to hit Scrappers at the right time to get rid of the Silver Mirrors, and the, I think I just got rid of four Silver Mirrors with the two, the two Tool Scrappers, and um, just took two prizes with Plasma Gale on threatening Trubbishes. So at this point, I'm 3-0, and I have to play against Matt Rockwell, who's basically playing almost card for card list. I think he changed a couple things about it. Um, and I drew absolutely dead, and <laughs> I basically drew pass, and then Matt won. And so then Matt was 4-0, which is good for him. He could ID his last two rounds. Um, my round five was against a Verzian Genesec Bouffant deck, and it was very close. Um, I don't remember the details, but I just remember it being very close. It was either like one of the last finish. It might have even gone to time. I can't remember, um, but I ended up having the win at the end, whatever it Sorry about the lack of details on that. And then the last round, I know um, at this point there were a couple 4 one ones or one or two that were not going to make it. Um, so I kind of did a risky thing and ID'd my last round. Normally I don't, I would, normally I would play it out, but um, I was the first one to ID, which then everyone else kind of had to play it out. And uh, I knew my resistance would be pretty good, having gone 3-0, and, and my opponent's well doing pretty well. So I wasn't that worried about it, even if everyone else I need. But, and I, I did end up making the top 8, and in the, the top 8 round I played against Matt, the mirror again, that I dead drew against during Swiss. And um, unfortunately this was a reverse of that situation, and he drew dead both games. Um, he ended up going for a thunderous noise at one point because it was kind of the only option he had available to him. And um, it, it was really, they were, we didn't play a good game all day. It was kind of unfortunate. Uh, but then I advanced to top four, <laughs> where I think my deck just, uh, it just kind of stopped. It was like, this is your dead draw time. And uh, it was against Mike Diaz playing uh, Verzian Genesect, Shaman Buffon. And the first game, I was, he was dead drawing, and I had, the only thing in my hand was an N. But other than the N, I had energies, I had um, all the things I needed, and the only thing he had was, he was um, manually building up the Genesect on the bench. Um, so I was like, okay, um, I'll, I just worked on setting up a Lugia. I didn't want to end him, because he had like a two card hand, he was not drawing anything. And the only two cards I have are Thunderous Active, Lugia on the bench. Um, Finally, I get my Lugia with two DCs and two plazas on. It's ready to go. Next turn, I'm going to come up and do the knockout thing for three prizes. He top decks Bicycle. He bicycles for two. He gets G-Booster Escape Rope. Um, so by this time, his Genesect has three energies. I have to Escape Rope into Lugia. It's horrible. It's really terrible. Um, it was very funny. <laughs> but, uh... So then my Lugia goes down, and I'm like, oh, okay, I thought this was going to be a pretty easy game, but I just end him to four, but I couldn't come back from that. Um, game two, I draw absolutely nothing, not even an energy to attack with, and he moves on to top two. <laughs> it was very terrible, but it happens. So I end day two with another top four, which I'm pretty happy about because I have my finishes now, and um, I'd like another top two or win, but uh, it's... Not gonna bother me that much if that doesn't happen. And day three, I decided that I'll just go with the same list again because uh, I honestly didn't see that many changes in the meta game. There's like really nothing I would change about it. Um, I think looking back, my list now has more support, more draw support. But um, at the time, I was just like, after every day, I was so tired and I was like, ah, I'm just going to bed. I'm <laughs> not trying to like test. But, okay, so day three, 
I played against a Hammer Time deck round one. I was like, oh, this is gonna be horrible. Um, I did the, the my plan, my standard plan again, which was just uh, raid a knuckle through two Sableyes to a Snorlax. Um, even though they're hammering me, I mean, like you're two shotting Sableyes. Unless you have Frozen City. Sometimes if you put Frozen City and they have to attach a sab save wire that does 20 and then you can knock it out with Thunderous. But that doesn't always work. A lot of times you're just two shotting them. But that's fine because they're going to be removing your energy. Um, so you'll have to get it back anyway. And then um, after those save lies were gone, she, had, she promoted a Dark Rye and Night's Beard. Um, and then I promoted Snorlax and took a team pack knockout on the Dark Rye. The only thing she had on the bench was another Dark Rye, and um, she would have had to have a switch in her deck, and she ended up not being able to get that Dark Rye out of the active, so I was able to team pack it for the win. Um, let's see. Round two, uh, I played against the TDK deck. Um, not much to say about that. Uh, Snorlax or er, Lugia take two prizes on Kyurem's. Snorlax can run through the rest of the deck. Um, round three, I played against uh, another Snorlax deck. Um, it was pretty close. I went the Lugia route. He went the Snorlax route. But Lugia takes two prizes on Snorlax pretty easily, and it's a lot of energy investment, a lot more than than Lugia. So I think in, in that way, um, going with Lugia is a better is a better uh, route. Just because you're going to conserve your resources a lot more, and he's lo a lot less fragile in that matchup. So then I'm 3-0. Um, I played against... Oh, I forgot um, to mention who won day two. It was Michael Scoran with Brizzy and Genesect. The finals were Mike Diaz and Michael Scoran both playing Brizzy and Genesect. Um, that's relevant because I'm round four. I played against Michael Scoran. Um, it was a very close match. Um, his deck played catchers in it, so he didn't rely on a red single being his attachment for turn. He, um, he played at least three catchers in his Verzian deck, um, which, which helped him preserve energy, I guess. But this match was very, very close. Um, the round ended in a tie um, because I remember at the end, uh, we can't remember exactly what happened, but I know what happened with me. I was in a situation where I had the win if I top decked a lightning because in my hand I had an iris, a plasma energy, and that's it. And I had a Genesect on the bench and a Thunderous. And there was a heavily damaged Verzian on his bench. So if I red signaled up the damaged Verzian, and then, but I had to attach the Lightning to Thunderous. He didn't have an energy. Ideally, I would have attached the Lightning and then red signaled for the win, but I was drawing completely dead and I did not have the Lightning. But I knew that this would be my most likely avenue to winning because I think there were like three Lightning or something left in my deck, which was fairly small, and there was a couple supporters in there too. So, uh, and then I would iris with, if I top deck the lightning, I would iris with the thunderous to knock out the Frisian for my last two prizes. Um, he really didn't have much of an avenue to winning at that point, but it was, um, it was plus three. So, um, it didn't matter because it ended in a tie. Uh, but what happens is I, I red signal it up and I pass and then he has like a two card hand and I have to hope that he just doesn't have an energy to retreat it. But he did, and he retreats it. I top deck the lightning, and I'm like, oh god. But it was really kind of a sketchy win condition. Uh, I didn't know I was going to top deck the lightning. But I just thought there was a, a strong chance that I might. But um, so yeah, that was a natural tie. <laughs> Weird. And round five, um, I played Jimmy Pendarvis with his Blastoise deck. And he was X and 1, I was X O one one so we kind of had to play it out, because um, I had to win one more game, and this 
gave me the best chance to win one more if I had two more tries rather than intentionally drawing and then having to win my last round. Um, so I ended up, I have nothing in my opening hand besides the cards for a T1 Lugia. <laughs> like, no supporter, no other Pokemon, just DCE, course machine, course machine. <laughs> so I do that, and I'm just sitting there with this Lugia, and I pass, because I can't attack turn one. And he's like, okay, um, fetch a Squirtle, but, uh, unfortunately he doesn't really draw anything, and I top deck out of my, uh, out of it. But I think turn two, before I do that, I, I think I just Plasma Gale this act of uh, Black Carrot Mex for like 120 damage. Because I'm like, oh, this is what I'm doing. But um, I ended up winning that game due to, he didn't really ever draw out of it. Um, and then round six, I'm against Dylan and Brian again, and we ID'd to guarantee both of us into the top eight. But we played a fun game. He was playing Gothitelle with a Silver Mirror tech. So eventually he just, uh, he was able to s arrange it so that his only Pokemon um, was a Gothitelle with a silver mirror attached. So I, I was basically walled by that and couldn't do anything about it. And I was glad I didn't have to deal with that in Swiss for real. Because that's kind of just like terrible. <laughs> um, in top eight, I played against Michael Scoran again. Um, it was very close. He won the first game. I don't remember much about it. I won the second game, probably. Um, I don't remember too much about that either. And then the third game, we barely have time for a third game. We don't really have time. He gets a very quick G booster, like T3 G booster, and I'm still setting up and can't take two prizes. So, uh, according to the rules, he wins. Uh, so, there, that was a shorter day for me. But um, if I'd have moved on to top four, I would have had to face Dylan Bryan's Gothitelle Silver Mirror combo, and that would have been the end of the road, and I wouldn't have gotten points anyway. So um, there was really no point, because <laughs> it was a terrible matchup waiting for me in top four. Um, as it was, it was a terrible matchup for Dylan, because obviously there's not too much he can do against Brisbane's um, with Gothitelle. And Michael Scoran won that day also, so he won two in a row with his catcher for the Genesect deck. The last day, there's not that much uh, to, to talk about. I know I've been going on a little long. Um, it kind of takes a while to recount four tournaments in one video, but this one's short. <laughs> uh, day four, I was frustrated by being kind of stopped at the top four every day, um, and like the general inconsistency issues with the Plasma deck. Um, and I had been seeing tons of Genesect, and Genesect won two days in a row. So I figured, um, day four there'd be a lot of Genesect. Um, so I played Brave War. Uh, not a good deck to play, again, for consistency reasons, but, um, a really good play against Genesect. And there, uh, there were a lot of Genesect day four. Um, so, round one. I won against a Brazilian Genesect. I don't remember too much about the game. I think that I just, I'm pretty sure I got a quick Dragon Burst, and I'm pretty sure I T2 Dragon Burst did a Brazilian with one energy, and they had to promote another Brazilian attached energy, and I'm pretty sure I Dragon Burst that also, and that was pretty much the game. Um, when Ray Boar works, it really works real well. So, Round two, it was against James Ballard again, with Brazilian Genesect still, but he added a Dusk Nor to it. Um, so it was Brazilian Genesect Dusk Nor, which is very interesting. He did it to hit numbers on the X's with the 50, the 20, and the 100. Um, this was a very, very, very terrible game for me. I start Shirachi, which is so bad, um, especially against Genesect, because it's like the, the free two prizes from a Megalo Cannon. Um, and then on top of that, I, yeah, I'm i unable to get out an Emboar until like turn 5, and I can't get an attack till like turn 7. Um, so by then, it was it was basically over. But it shows what an advantageous matchup it is for Raymore that I was able to come back and bring it to 1-1 one, one prizes, um, even with that horrible, horrible setup. Um, but he ended up, there was the last turn, he 
put my tap egg to sleep in the act of he was playing lasers and I didn't wake up, I couldn't retreat and take a knockout and he could come up with Brazy and just emerald slash my tap egg for the last prize. So um, he had a turn in the beginning of the game where I had to bench a rush ram and I was gonna like just manually attach to it because I wasn't getting up an M4 <laughs> and he played town map, saw that his G booster was prized, he moved some damage to uh, um, Jirachi, took the G-Booster, signaled up the Rush Ram, and G-Boostered it. Um, so that was his three prize turn. That was interesting. Um, okay, and then the next round, I'm like, okay, it's fine. I could still win out, right? The next round I play against the Blastoise. Um, I don't remember the name, but he went first. I had to start with my baby Rayquaza, which was my tech for the matchup, obviously, and he, it gets turned to Secret Sword in or 130 by Caldeo. So I'm like, oh, that's unfortunate. Um, and after that, uh, he just got everything he needed. He had like Black Blisses all lined up on the bench. So even though I had Dragon Burst all ready to go, I couldn't force the odd prize exchange. I didn't hit my Super Odd until late in the game. When I had a Hail Mary play, I could have got back in the game. I Super Odded the Rayquaza back in, and I had to Juniper, I had to hit the Rayquaza and a Superior Ret out of like a 15 card deck, and I had two Superior Rets, I hit the Rayquaza, didn't hit the Ret, so that was basically the end of the game. Um, yeah. It really, uh, I really don't like Ray for it, so it felt like it was very inconsistent and like, kind of Luxac oriented, but it maybe could have used an Electrode, like, to help that. But I felt like I had real struggles setting up, and uh, it just wasn't enough to come back, even over the power of the deck. But um, uh, my boyfriend, Andrew, played the exact same list and went 402 and made it to the top four. Um, so it's not, maybe it's not the deck, maybe it's just me. <laughs> but uh, I dropped after that because I was kind of just tired and fed up with Raybor. But um, Andrew's top four match was against Dylan Bryan, uh, who had changed to a Plasma Lugia list uh, for the day. His version opted for catchers over the Genesect Plasma combo, um, which I'm not sure how I feel about. Uh, he also cut Frozen City from the list and played lasers, no Burbank. Um, which, I, d I don't know, I'm not like, I hate flippy cards, and I, I, obviously I see the value in catcher, even though it's a flip, but I just personally feel like it never works for me. But um, it was working for him in his and Andrew's top four games, he flipped a couple heads. Um, one game he took a Jirachi that Andrew had to eventually get out of the dead draw for the last three prizes with Lugia. Um, I guess you don't waste your attachment for the turn on a Genesect, so that can allow you to come back with attackers if your energy gets wiped off the board. Um, but it worked out for Dylan and he ended up winning that day. So, um, he was uh, playing against Frank Diaz with Hydreigon in the finals. Dylan was. So, um, anyway, the Jersey Marathon was lots of fun. Um, I really had a good time and I was happy with the plasma deck for the most part, and um, it was a good end to cities. And I'm looking forward to regionals, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm going to Virginia, and hopefully I'll see a lot of old friends and make a lot of new ones. So, thanks for listening.